Let's add some more detail to our doghouse using our paint bucket tool. So click on the paint bucket tool up there on your large tool set and this automatically launches your materials browser. Now this is a little bit different between PC and Mac. So on a Mac you want to click on the brick icon up there uh, on your materials browser and that'll get you to a point where you can then select from uh, our libraries here that are very similar. Let's first select our brick and cladding. And then I'm going to click on a material and that way it'll become active and I can paint with it. So I'll click on my siding tan material and it becomes active. And now to apply that material to a surface, I simply click on a surface in my model. So I can add materials to my model very easily. Now let's go back to our materials browser, click on the drop down and choose roofing. I'm going to select a roofing shingles asphalt material. I click on that and then I just click on the surface in my model. And I can apply that roofing material. Now if for some reason you decide that you want to change a material, there's no need to erase a material from a surface. You simply just paint over it. So I could select a different shingle and then just click on that surface again and paint over that existing material. I also go to my colors. In the colors menu I can select from all kinds of different colors. I'll choose this dark brown and use that as a trim. So I'm using my orbit tool uh, navigation tools to kind of get in there and really see what I'm working on. There's a common tendency to want to stay really zoomed out. Uh, that's no good. You're not using your screen real estate there. So really practice using those navigation tools. Get in there, zoom in, and look at what you're working on. Next I might select one more color. I have this black. Paint my door black. And then last, let's go to our vegetation library and I can paint some grass on the ground. So all of these material libraries over here on this drop down we can select from a lot of preloaded SketchUp materials. Now that we've applied some materials let's take a look at how we can edit materials and change these. So first thing I want to do is come over here into my material browser and I want to select the in model collection. I can either click on this house icon or I can click on this drop down and select my in model collection. This shows me all of the materials that I've actually used in this model. So to edit a material I can either select it and click on my edit tab or really the easiest way is once you're in this in model collection is to just double click on it and this will this will help for both PC and Mac if we just double click on this guy that will open up our edit tab. Now again, there are some differences between PC and Mac. On the Macintosh, it's uh, instead of having these different drop downs for all these ways to choose a color, there's a couple of icons on your materials browser. So you can click on those to get these different uh, color wheel, uh, hue, lightness, saturation. That's the one that I like to use. So we can kind of modify our material color by sliding this around. I'm going to choose something that's pretty bright yellow maybe lighten it up a little bit and then also I can adjust the scale so you can see down lower on my cladding siding tan we can adjust this to maybe uh, 12 inches so that adjusts the scale now since we've adjusted our siding material our trim might not be a, a real good choice so uh, or our trim color might not be the perfect choice for that so we can go back to our select tab and double click on our trim color. And now we can edit this. Now I could either slide this around and pick something manually or I can also sample from the screen. This little icon here I can click on and match color on screen. I click once to activate that sampler tool and then I just click on a color on my screen. And now my trim matches my siding. But I want to either just darken that up a little bit, make it a little bit different so it is a trim color. Maybe we'll even just make it white. 
Let's go ahead and close our material browser. We don't need that open right now. And let's add another object in here. Let's add a water bowl. So we can kind of zoom in here so we can really see what we're working on. And to start a water bowl, we're going to use the circle tool. So click on that circle tool up there on your large tool set. And then on the ground here, I'm going to hover on face, click once to start, move my cursor away from my starting point, and let go of the mouse. At this point, I can be very accurate and type 6, enter. And now our water bowl has an exact radius of 6 inches. Now we can use our push-pull tool and pull this guy up by 4. Remember, that hot spot is right at the tip of that red arrow, so I'll position that red arrow pointing at my surface, click once to start, suggest my direction, let go of the mouse, and type 4, enter. Now we've pulled that guy up by exactly 4 inches. Now let's add some more detail to this water bowl. We'll use a tool called the offset tool. Activate your offset tool up there on the large tool set and I'm going to zoom in even closer so I can really see what I'm working on. Notice that the offset tool has that red square that kind of defines the actual starting point. So the offset tool will create a copy of the circle and then automatically basically scale it creates concentric shapes. So when I click once to start, I can move my mouse cursor in towards the middle, let go, and type one, enter. So now I've created a, basically created a copy of that uh, perimeter line in by one inch. So the dimension between this edge and this edge is one inch all the way around. Next, I'll use my push-pull tool and let's push this guy down by three. And you notice what happened here, I actually have a surface selected. I think I, I just moused over it and it, it automatically selected for me. So we can always right click off away from geometry to clear our selection. So I'm gonna do that now and then come over here and click on the middle of my water bowl and push it down to select a direction, let go of my mouse and type three enter. And now I've pushed that guy down to create my water bowl. Now let's go back to our paint bucket tool and let's make this a different color. So I click on my paint bucket tool which automatically launches my material browser. I want to go back to the select tab. On Mac you usually have to just click on that brick and that'll get you back to where you can select from your material libraries. I click on the drop down and go to colors and let's just select maybe an orange, something colorful, and then I'll paint all of these different surfaces so that my water bowl is orange. Now we're gonna leave that material browser open for the time being, and let's do another push-pull. I'll click on my push-pull tool to activate it, position that red arrow pointing at the bottom of my water bowl, click once to start, and then tap Control or Option on the Mac. And remember, that creates a copy, uh, leaves a copy of the starting surface behind. I'm going to move my mouse to suggest a direction, let go of the mouse, and type to enter. Now, we want to paint a water material on the top of this water bowl to really give it the effect of being an actual water bowl. So I'll, in my material browser, I'll click on my drop-down menu here to look at my libraries, and let's go to our water library and we can select maybe this water pool light. That'll probably look pretty good. So now we have water in our water bowl. Now that we have this whole scene set up, we can close out of our materials, and let's look at something called components under Window Components. We go to Window Components and launch the component browser. Components are pre-built SketchUp models, and there are a couple of collections that are automatically installed when we install SketchUp. So, a lot like the Material Browser, you can always see which components are in your model by clicking on the house icon. You can see that we have this one component in our model. We can also click on this drop-down and select from Component Libraries. Let's choose the Components Sampler Library. And here you can see we have a, a bunch of different pre-built SketchUp models. And we're just going to add the 2D Girl's Dog component, 
we click once on that in our components browser and then we click again in our SketchUp model. And now we have completed the scene.